you get the exact same curvature. Now, if the line had changed in its arc, I could then properly in between it by doing the shift and trace technique. So if one line was slightly straighter than the other, I could then in between it so it actually straightens out in between. Trace off my circle. So now this is my halfway, and I can flip these. See the action taking place. The ball's getting a little lumpy over here. All right, so now my next in-between is going to be number two, between drawing number one and number three. This will be a halfway position. Again, finding my fulcrum point. Path of action from this point down here to this point here. There's my path of action. Find the halfway point between the two and then draw my arc in. So again, I can do the shift and trace or I can just draw a freehand like this. So shift and trace would be more accurate just to be sure that it's actually following drawing my circle. Okay, so that gives us our first three drawings now. So now we're going to move from three to five halfway position on this one is going to be number four. Again, fulcrum point. Find the path of action between your two end points there. Halfway in between. Shift and trace. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm going to move up to eight. Six is my half way in between these two. It's easing into this position, but now we're into the issue of the reversal. So I have six and seven have to go in between these two. So I need to find A, my fulcrum point. I need to find the halfway point between these two points here. Okay, so my distance is quite a bit smaller. But now what's happening is I'm going from number five where the curve is going in this direction. And I'm going back down to this one. So what I want to do is I want to start this part here going down and continue this part here going up. Right? So this section of my line is going to start to curve in the opposite direction, but it's only going to go one-third the distance, right? Because I've got two in-betweens here, I'm going to go one-third the distance. So my one point, I'll just trace it off here, my one line is going this way, my other line is going this way. So this is the part that I'm going to reverse back down again, so I'm going to find the one-third position here, and this part is going to curve pretty much in a straight line maybe a little bit in this direction here. But now I'm looping this part here over. Okay, because this part here is still going up. So it's going to form a very gentle bit of an S curve this way. Okay, so it looks like that. So when you flip it now, this part's still going up, this part here is coming down. The optical illusion that I want to create here is I'm just going to put a little point on this. That's my surfer. Okay, so think of this as the wave. Here's the wave. My surfer is right here. As we go to this drawing here, the wave continues up in this direction here, so my surfer is going to move over to here. And then eventually at the end, my surfer is going to go over here to this point. So he's going to slide along that line. See how it's moving? So I want that to be on the crest so to speak, as it moves across, traveling across that way. 
Right? So I'm going to leave the ball off for now because I want to complete my second line here on number seven. You can come back and put the circles in later. So I'm going to go from this position to this position here, seven and eight. So I need to find my fulcrum point, the halfway point between these two points here. It's going to be right there. And again, this part here is going to curve down now between these two lines here. This line and this line, I'm going to go halfway in between these two. So I did the one third on the other side, so this one third now automatically makes this a half. Right? So the idea is if I've got a line here, a line over here, if I do one third over here, one third the distance there, then the one third on this side is now half the distance between those two. Right? So I'm going one half the distance in between here. So this part is curving down this way, and my crisscross point is coming up over here. So now my surfer dude is now going to be roughly about here, sliding across. Okay. So now I can go back and drop in my circle. Number six, sorry. So six is my one third position where the ball is going to be in the lower position here. So I'm going to look for on a circle going from this line here, the bottom of this line here of the circle, to the bottom of this line here. I'm going to track that distance from there to there and find the one third, which will be right there. And that's where the bottom edge of the ball goes. So now I can take this off pegs, line it up on here to the point where the string attaches and the bottom of the ball should attach to that point right there. And that gives me my trace off point. So now from 6 to 8, I go back to my number 7 line and I can drop in my halfway in between for my ball. half the distance between those two points. So the one ball is up here, there's the high point of it, there's the other one there, I go halfway in between. Do the exact same thing that I just did, where I find the connection point of the ball, and that should line up with the top edge there. Alright, well, let's take a look at these drawings in order now. So take your drawings, put them in order from one on the bottom, eight on the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now we're going to do our stack flip. We take all our drawings, line them all up. Okay, so remember your technique. This is where we're starting to apply it now, so you got to get this down. So you hold your paper like this, Flip it this way, see how it fans out there? I pinch this side here, I reverse it, fans out even more on this side, pinch this side now, and these should fan out really nicely on this side. Just wobble it a little bit to give it distance there, and now I can take the drawings and drop them down. So there's my swing going up, and then it reverses and flips to the other side. So there's my overlapping action right there. Now what I want to do is I want to get the swing on the opposite side coming back down again. And what I need to do is I need to take my number one drawing and I need to get the opposite version of this. So I'm going to show you a quick little trick here. There's two different ways that we could do this. If you want to have an entire stack so you can flip all the drawings all the way through, then this is the technique I want you to use. Take your blank sheet of paper and put it down on your peg. Take your drawing number one, flip it upside down, put it on the pegs, and then do the rub down transfer. Just take your fingers and rub it. And magical fagical, there's the transfer. You can just barely see it. Actually, let me just put my fingers on here. Can you see it there? 
it's just very, very lightly transferred over so that the lead went onto the paper there. So I'll just trace this off now. Could you just put the number one drawing, fold it over, and yep. put a blank sheet on top of it? Yeah. Yep, yeah, you can do that too, yeah. Just use your light table as well. I don't have a light table, so the light in this table doesn't work, so I can't do that. But yeah, you just turn on your light table, trace it off, you're all set to go. Okay, so those are two variations on it. The other variation would be to simply take your number one drawing, flip it upside down, and trace off the drawing on the back side of this one. According to my timing chart here, over on the side, drawing number one is now drawing number 15 on the back side. So again, if I want to cut down on the amount of paper that I'm using, I'm just going to reverse this and flip it over. Okay? But if you want to be able to do a stack flip of all the stuff, then do it this way. So 15 is my next key. So now what I want to do is I want to take my drawing number eight. Drawing number eight is my high point. Remember on our overall path of action thing. We then reverse the direction and brought it back down again. So what was the position for number seven is number nine, then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we're coming back down again. So our timing chart from here to 15, I'm gonna have 13 as my halfway point, which is my breakdown. 14 is a quarter. And then I've got my slow out from the high point over here. So I just reverse my numbers. 12, half of that, 11, half of that, 10, half of that, 9. Right. So now, my overall path of action is coming back down in this direction here. I just go and do my straight in-betweens. 13 would be my halfway point, which is my first in-between, my first breakdown. So once again, Finding my fulcrum point. Here's my low point down here. Here's my high point up here. So I'm going to bring this down across like this. There's my path of action. Finding my halfway point, which is right there. 